Hello everyone, Ted Clayton here. This is going to be another video in the Asian Black Pill series that I decided to call Outside Looking In. I kept saying it in the first two videos and I said, oh, there goes the title right there. So another story that I wanted to share, actually a few more popped up, but this is one of the uh, more significant and standout stories that came to mind. And again, something from the outside looking in. Right now, where I'm at, I'm in a mall, so I'm going to watch my language because where I'm standing, I can see who's coming from my left, but not my right. So I'm going to just watch the language, but I think you guys already know. I mean, the, I already started with the premise, but uh, I'm going to have to watch my language. Uh, I know, so I don't want to draw too much attention. And I don't have the light because I want to I want to make, I want to be as low key as possible, you know, just to get these videos out. Pro tip, if you're ever in a situation like in a public setting, let me make sure I look at my right to, so I don't give this secret away. If you're ever in a public setting, right and you're vlogging right say that you are doing a facetime don't say that you're vlogging or that you're doing a zoom i was in a library and i was trying to do an interview and the security guards came it just so happened and i was there about 15 minutes before the interview started i asked if i could make a phone call i didn't say that and i know i'm digressing i didn't say that I was going to be on video, but I said, I'm going to be making a phone call. Uh, and where can I do it? In the library. The gentleman, the associate told me, you can go to the staircase. He just said, you can go to the staircase. So I'm thinking, all right, I'm there preparing. And I just had a small setup. It was just this phone, my iPhone SE. I did have the light, um, but I have a small, very small uh, selfie stick. Just something that just you can hold with your hand. It doesn't protract or anything like that or extend or anything like that no legs or anything like that um so very small setup i went all the way and i know i digress um, i'm going off on a bit of a tangent but just again pro tip went to the top floor where there was not going to be too many people there i was setting up I, I took a minute to set everything up and i said okay it took me about 15 minutes like let me get here just in time to just kind of relax um just kind of gather my thoughts then set up the phone. That whole thing took about 15 minutes. The security guards just happened to come two, three minutes into the um, conversation. And then they asked, what are you doing? So I said, I'm doing, uh, I'm, I'm doing an interview. I'm doing, a, and they said, are you Zooming? And I said, yes, you know, just kind of keep it simple. I said, no, you can't do that, it's a fire hazard. And I'm thinking, well, I don't understand. They said, if you're assuming it's a fire hazard in the, uh, if you're doing it in the staircase, it's a, a fire hazard just anywhere in the building. You have to do it in a certain area. And I'm thinking, well, this is just my small setup. And they said, no, you can't. And I asked if I could make a phone call. They was like, well, that's not a phone call. Uh, you're Zooming. And I said, well, I'm talking to someone. And, and I didn't have an elaborate setup. It wasn't like my laptop a microphone and a big light or in you know things like that and sound diffusers it was just it was just a small light very small light that i have in my phone that's it and again i was on the top floor where no one really was it was not that much traffic and they just happened to come at that time but i think if i would have said i was uh, doing a facetime which is a phone call might have um uh, might have smoothed the whole thing out anyway i digress and did the interview did i get the job no i didn't and I'm not even going to get into that. I think I did well, but sometimes it's just a disconnect with the, uh, the interviewer and yourself. Okay, so another account. This has to do with... This one has to do with the Chinese. It's pretty late right now. It's 1030 and there's still a little bit of traffic here. And it's also pouring rain right now. It's like a storm. I just came from Jersey and it was a storm. So it's just a bunch of people. But you know, it's Friday night. They're just wrapping up the evening. But anyhow, okay, I digress. 
I needed to go to a hotel. This was when I had decided to move out. And when I moved out, it wasn't with my family's best wishes. Let's just put it at that. I actually had made the decision. They, it was a crazy situation. I'm just giving a little backstory here. But it was a crazy situation where things were changing in the house. They wanted me to pitch in, to contribute. I didn't like the uh, proposal, what, they, what the demands were, what they were asking from me. So I said, well, then I'm going to have to leave. But what I did was I left before I said I was going to leave. So a little trick right there. So they wouldn't try to set me up. It was just I was already leaving. I was already putting my stuff in storage, and they knew that. But a week before I said I was going to leave, I had just I, 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 I broke out. I, I dipped. Um, so that got a little upset about that. But anyway, I digress. So, again, I'm out on the world, independent, but out on my own very difficult and maybe one day I'll share those stories right and again give me a little backstory and it is it's pertinent to this uh, this example it really gives up all a context everything so I'm on my own I don't have a lot of money really I had a little bit of money but not much at all and I didn't really have that many prospects I had to start hitting the ground running looking for jobs and things like that so it was very tough so anyhow all that to say, I needed to stay at a hotel. This had to be, this was what, 2013, 2013, probably 2013, 2014. I needed to stay at a hotel. I didn't have a lot of money. So I go on hotels.com and then they had a hotel called the Sunbright Hotel, which was in Chinatown on Hester Street. If anyone knows about the Sunbright Hotel, I'm sure you have some fond memories of the place. Hester Street, Chinatown, right off of Bowery. $50. Now, this is, again, a hotel, New York City, Chinatown, 2013-14. One of the two. I'm not going to really go into, I'm not going to dig into my my files mentally and try to remember exactly, but it was basically around that time. And, and that's not that, that relevant. And the way it worked, that you have to go there and paying cash. You can't pay with a card. I think you can, if I remember correctly, I think you can pay a deposit, a $50 deposit, one night deposit, but then whatever, however many nights you were staying, you had to pay in cash. I think you could do the deposit on card. It doesn't even matter, but you basically, it's $50 cash. $50 though, but $50 cash. It was kind of strange how they broke it up because the way it was set up when I started seeing it was there was one side that was like A more conventional hotel and then there was the hotel for everyone else and I'm gonna explain that it was more SROs uh, it really looked like a whole illegal setup um, allegedly I could be completely wrong but it definitely definitely there was I don't want to I don't want to get into anybody in trouble when I after just saying that but um it definitely was not a conventional setup I'll say that much. So I could be wrong on that, but it definitely was not a conventional setup, and it definitely helped. So that's that. Okay. All that to say. Chinatown, New York City, Hester Street, right off of Bowery. And actually, in this place, somebody tried to throw me off uh, a fire escape. Um, just another side note. And I'm going to get to the uh, to the real deal. But... I met this guy there, a cancer, and I I don't like to mention signs because I follow astrology, but at the same time, I don't want people to start to um, try to identify and then just go off on a beaten path, but I'm a Pisces. This gentleman was a cancer. I have a thing with cancers. I have like this connection with them where we can kind of form a bond, but it really starts to break apart because in my estimation they start to do some silly stuff so i just met this guy and he was cool we started being friends but he was just kind of uh obnoxious to be around but anyhow we all were drinking and smoking we got on this fire escape and then this random guy just tries to pick me up and throw me off the fire escape i don't know this guy so i'm just sitting there he's he's like joking around but it's like me, the, the, the cancer, the, the, the big guy, this big guy who I started befriending, 
and two other guys, some Indian guy, and then this, uh, it was a white guy, and not to, you know, imply anything, but it was this white guy. And he, he wants to, like, mess around, he starts uh, trying to pick me up while we're on the fire skate to try to lift me and basically throw me out, but, but and throw me off the fire skate, but joking around. And I said, okay, all right. I just calmly put myself, I get back inside. I got behind the window. Everybody was hanging out in in the fire escape, but I hung out right at the window, just like this, where it's like, I'm right here, but everyone's out here. That's how it was. And I was like, yeah, no, you can pass me a smoke right here. Uh, forget you for doing that. That's that. So, I, you know, and then when that guy left, uh, that guy, that white guy was the one who kind of set this whole thing off to, for us to chill. And that's how I met the cancer. But uh, after that, we started hanging out. It was me, the Indian guy, and the cancer. We started hanging out on the roof, and it was pretty cool then, but then we got in trouble for that, so that was that. But anyhow, I digress. Uh, a lot of story, you know, just a lot to share. So I remember when I remember, again, this is in Chinatown. When I went to this hotel, so if you remember, like, uh, like I said just a moment ago, there's the hotel that's the part of the hotel that's more conventional, and then there's the part that's a little more unconventional, the $50 a night uh, part of, 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 the, of, the, of the place. So the way it, it, it happens is you're at the front desk and they say, okay, if you go to the more traditional setup, okay, that way. If not, okay, go that way. And then you, there's this big metal door. You go through it and then you go uh, take up these stairs, uh, go up these steps. I had to go to the fifth floor, I remember. Now, in this, uh, I have to be careful, I have to be a little more specific here. In this place, there were a whole bunch of Chinese men. Now, the way it's set up is each floor had these units. I want to say maybe 50 units per floor. But it, it, and I can't really give dimensions, but it was basically literally the size of a closet for each room. It was cool. It helped the $50 a night. I was, you know, going through a transition, so it was fine. It's all I needed. I had Wi-Fi. The bathroom was okay. They tried their best to maintain it. I will say that much. So let, let's say 50 units, small units. I want to say maybe, uh, so we have length, uh, width, and height. So length, I would say, I don't know, 10 feet by 6 by 12, something like that. Really small. Again, like literally a closet. Really small. And if you guys know the place, you guys know exactly what I'm talking about. We had to go to the fifth floor. That's where the, how, how would I say this if I had to identify it? The non, um, the non frequent customers would go, the ones who would just check in, check out. Before you get to the, for that floor and then the subsequent floors were for everyone else who was uh, uh, booking a, non, a non-traditional room or a unit. Before you got to that floor, the fifth floor, there were four floors, about four, maybe the first floor counted as the uh, the front desk. Four floors of just Chinese men. And I remember you go up the steps and then you can look uh, there's, you go up uh, these steps and then there's two doors, there's one, then there's a long hallway to get up the steps on the other side. So there's two, basically, entrances. And when you see one side, it's just all these Chinese men. I didn't know what to think. I was like, and they're just there, just having their little rice cookers and whatever else. Uh, you know, the, all these lanterns, good luck lanterns and stuff like that. A bunch of lanterns all around. They were all just, you know, shirtless, smoking cigarettes. Well, I don't, let me not say they were smoking cigarettes, but they were just all just reading newspapers, you know, you know how to turn this. So they're just sitting there just, you know, talking smack and whatever. Go to the next floor. Another floor, just a whole bunch of Chinese people. Now, that's why I give the price. And then the areas, you guys can get an idea of the setup. Remember, again, uh, and look this up. 
Sunbright Hotel. Great place. Love the place. Love you guys if anybody's watching it. Um, and hopefully didn't get anyone in trouble for that. I'm, I'm probably incorrect. It was just a little more non-traditional. Uh, but they had one set up where it was, because this, this is why I say this. I, I remember, because I went to that hotel, I needed to be there. For, I, I was there a few times. I think they shut it down, I think. I passed by there not too long ago, maybe about six months ago, and I think they shut it down. I would come in there, and then you see, I, I remember seeing like Europeans or just regular, just white people, whatever, uh, tourists come in, and then they will go in one direction at, at the front desk, and then everybody else, the rest of us, we would go in the other direction, metal door and up the stairs. And again, $50 a night, cash. So again, give us some context. I, I think you guys see where I'm going with this. Bunch of Chinese men. It just blew my mind. I didn't know what to think of it. And then the people that were running it, what was strange was that the people that were at the front desk were, it would rotate. Sometimes it would be a Chinese guy or a black girl. It would rotate. But um, the people that were cleaning up the place and all that, doing housekeeping, they, they tried. They tried their best. I tried. And my arm is, forgive me for shaking, my arm is getting a little tired, so I'm gonna wrap this up. But they, they were they were Chinese as well. But again, three, four floors, all Chinese men. So again, I, I, I say 50 is probably a little more than that, but let's say 50, and then that's four floors. So that's 200 just Chinese men in little units, just, but it's just all Chinese. It, and it wasn't just kind of coincidentally, it's, they tell you it starts from this floor up, and then you, it's as obvious, you see it, it's just all Chinese men. And all that to say, and I know I went, you know, uh, if you're still listening, thanks, thanks for listening. All that to really say is, they look, the impression I got, and I didn't really, it didn't really sink in just yet when I had, you know, I didn't really, I didn't, couldn't really put it together when I was, you know, seeing this. It, it's more shocking because uh, you're, you're just, and yeah, there's now thinking this is 2021, it's almost a decade ago. Yeah, I don't really know what to think of it, to make of it. But the impression after processing all these years, they look disposable. That's the only word I can give. They looked disposable. Uh, so yeah, the Sunbright Hotel. Uh, you, uh, you guys definitely have a special place in my heart. Um, again, a non-traditional setup. There goes security. I'll probably look for something to wrap this up. But non-traditional setup, but definitely helped out in the time of need. But anyhow, disposable. Uh, that's all for now. Thanks for listening. Enjoy the rest of your day.